Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Shout you to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank the Lord for this beautiful another day that thou hast added to our lives. As we celebrate this Lord's day, Lord, with the word by church, gracious God, we pray for your mighty presence with us, Lord. Let the church, let the world outside know that we are the people of the living God who worship you in spirit and truth. And so, Lord, help us to worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 24, verses beginning from 13 onwards, and we'll be reading a few verses in between. Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, 13 onwards. Now, behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called the Mars, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, and they walked together. Of all these things which had happened, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad. Verse 19 And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Verse 37 And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us. The second scripture portion that we are going to look into is from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verses reading from 19 to 21. Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verses reading from 19 to 21. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, I will love him and manifest myself to him. Here is the lesson. May the good Lord add his blessings to the reading and understanding of his holy word. Amen. The title for our meditation today in the message that we are looking into the word of, from the word of God goes like this where we read Jesus telling to his disciples you are witnesses of these. You are witnesses of these. Friends, today, as we all know that we are in a very special season of our Christian calendar, namely the post-resurrection season. Post-resurrection season. As we celebrated last Sunday, the resurrection, the Easter Sunday as such, let us be reminded of the fact that during this coming 40 days of time, we will be meditating from the Word of God where we see that the great revelation of Jesus Christ that has been given to His disciples at that point of time. Today, we must realize as people of God, there is one message in the Bible that Satan, the enemy of God, will not like to hear. The enemy will not like that message to be preached to the world. Enemy will not like that message be heard by the people of God. And that is the message of his very defeat that Jesus gave him on that cross and from that resurrection. Satan will never, never like the message of resurrection. And you don't wonder about it. The moment, the time, the season is over of the post-resurrection, we very conveniently forget about the fact 
of this very message of resurrection how sad it is and that is what it makes the difference in our day to day life in day to day dealings in this world to know that how conscious we are of the very presence of risen Jesus Christ that is given to us the presence of Jesus Christ today briefly we will, as we look into the word of god we want to see this on the second sunday after the resurrection of Jesus Christ what what is that the lord is speaking to our hearts this morning jesus said told to his disciples you are my witnesses of these things and friends today you and me the church of god is going to be witnesses of these things you and me are expected to be the witnesses of jesus crucifixion and jesus resurrection and that's what the entire gospel talks about before we go may i add one more fact that resurrection of jesus christ is not just over at one point of time but jesus gives his risen revelation to his his people to his church throughout the generation throughout the centuries all together and today the question is how many of you and how many of us are ready are willing or seeking the very revelation of jesus christ will be upon us and that is one of the verse that we are going to touch up today the incident that we see that two of the disciples of jesus christ were walking from jerusalem to emmaus the story is very well known to all of us we have heard this title again today we are going to pick up some few points from this story and see that how we can apply and how relevant is this story even in our day to day life friends in this chapter of st luke chapter 24 we have read this few verses from this gospel and as we have read will not be reading the entire portion as such but however i request you to please open your bible and look into this particular part of the scripture and we may continue to read it little after in this passage we are seeing that jesus the risen jesus christ is walking with his disciples but the disciples didn't know that jesus is walking with them and the scripture says that because jesus restrained their eyes they could not see or recognize that the person walking with them is jesus christ what do we learn from this particular disciples through their life and through their faith through the struggle that they were going today jesus while he started walking with them he is asking to them what kind of conversation is that you are having with one another and you are sad please note that word there what kind of conversation that you are having with one another and you are sad today friends we converse with people we talk to different people jesus is asking after that conversation is over or going on you are sad the message of easter is the message of joy and peace that's what jesus is going to tell us in this passage and jesus is asking why you are talking and conversing with god with each other why you are sad let us come to our own time today what are we talking today what is that conversation that we are having in our own homes today in our society in the world today yes some of us probably have made the very fact of corona this is even probably greater than god himself god forgive us the very spirit of death and sickness that is going on it has become a, the greatest news in the world today well that's a fact that's happening outside the world but god is asking today within the church of god what is the conversation that you are having with you with your dear ones with one another what is that and friends let me bring to your kind notice we converse with our dear ones every day that is in our in our homes 
families and offices. We converse with self all the time, day and night almost. We converse with even Satan knowingly, unknowingly. He speaks to us, we respond, not knowing that Satan is speaking to me. Just an example, when Peter told Jesus, you are not going to be killed, you are not going to be persecuted, I am going to protect you. Jesus simply said, Satan, get behind me. This is not from God. And this, that, that reminds us that we, Satan speaks to us and we speak back and say, no, I am going to defend my Lord. And that is from sin. And one more thing we see here, we converse with our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that true? In today's Lord's day. He expects us to converse with, with the living Lord Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, tragically enough, how much we really converse with our risen Lord Jesus Christ, that is the question. What are you talking about within yourself, with one another? What is that conversation? And you are sad. Let us, friends, remember that the message of resurrection is the message of victory of Jesus Christ over the ruler of this world. We Christian people, we God's people must understand this fact. Who is the ruler of this world today? Jesus is telling the ruler of this world is coming now, but I have nothing to do with him. In John chapter 12, he's telling, ruler of this world is going to be cast out of the world. That is Jesus telling just before his crucifixion. And now after the crucifixion and resurrection, now Jesus is here victoriously coming out of the grave, defeating that, that great enemy of God, his Satan spirits, and his power of death. And that's how the message of resurrection will never be light by Satan and his forces. And so, friends, we preach today the message of resurrection to the whole world. Jesus is risen. Indeed, he is risen. And this is how we see that. Jesus, why he becomes victorious over the powers of darkness and sacred forces, Satan is defeated. He is defeated. And this very fact should help us to understand that the, that the time virus that is that is spreading the world namely corona is not greater than our risen law people are afraid and scared about our sickness and death today and jesus is saying look here i am the life and resurrection he who believes in me though he dies i will raise him again jesus proved that through his own resurrection when he rose again from the dead. And this was the defeat that Satan had to accept. And he is he's shocked. He's, he is defeated completely. Jesus rightly said in John 12, chapter 32, 33, He said, If I am lifted up, that is, if I am crucified, I will draw all men to me. I will draw all men to me. And that's what exactly happening after Jesus was lifted on the cross. He tried and he prayed for the forgiveness and for the salvation of mankind. And after three days, after the third day, Jesus is again raised to life and life resurrection. And he says, he says I will draw all men to me. Praise today. We, without having conversation with Jesus Christ, you will always be sad. While you are worrying about the world outside, you will be sad. While you will be talking about some virus or some sickness and death, you will be sad. But Jesus is coming to meet, to reach us and to be with us, saying that I have defeated Satan. I am alive. Look at my hands and my side. I am the same Jesus. And this is how we see that. Jesus is asking us today, my dear God's people, what is that conversation that we are having in our world, in our own world? Are we talking to the living risen Lord or are we talking to the people or anybody else in this world? And Jesus wants us to talk to him. When we talk to Jesus, what happens? Secondly, 
here we want to see that Jesus is talking to this two of the disciples there and he says that after he opens the conversation the disciples tell him are you the stranger in Jerusalem are you the only stranger in Jerusalem that you don't know what is happening in Jerusalem and he and they started talking about Jesus and saying that don't they asked Jesus don't you know these things what thing Jesus asked and then they tell these things concerning Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and in all people and now the chief priest and all our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him look at these disciples what they talk what they say about the identity of Jesus Jesus of Nazareth he was great prophet they never said they didn't probably at that point of time realize son of god what did Jesus talk son of man and so many other things that Jesus taught but they say he was a prophet there were many many prophets in the bible in the old and old old testament that we read about jesus is not just one of the prophets that we must understand many other religious people think of jesus is just one of the prophets and nothing more than that but jesus is something more more than that and they his disciples tell him for that they are saying that this about jesus they this people they caught him the religious leaders and they they put him to death crucify him and they say well verse 21 we read but we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem israel indeed besides all this today is the third day and we thought he is going to redeem israel we were hoping they say and friends this is a tragic story of our our our, our day to day life we hope we were not sure that is the problem why jesus is reaching to us here in his risen appearance to these disciples to tell that it's not only the hope that you have had but the hope has come to fulfillment now after my resurrection and here we see as these disciples they they were talking they said he was a great prophet in word and deed how much we really know jesus and today jesus having risen from the dead and he wants to have that conversation with us he wants to have that real living relationship with us if we consider him still only the prophet that will not have jesus what he is we must recognize and give all glory to him and this is what is happening what happened in his resurrection here jesus being the son of god as he was raised from death to life what has exactly happened in the entire entire universe entire mankind very important the the very resurrection of jesus christ was the beginning of new creation we have many references to that we will be looking to that very soon in the days to come the death the resurrection of jesus christ began the new creation of god creating the mankind in a new way and that is what is the resurrection of jesus christ talks about this was the beginning of the end of satanic rule the end of rulers ruler of this world and at the same time this was the beginning of god's kingdom this was the beginning of the big the kingdom of god that jesus started preaching you remember when he said kingdom of god has come kingdom of has god come it is near repent believe and be baptized that kingdom that was his bringing he preached three and a half years and now after his death and resurrection he says that now look here that ruler of this world is cast out his real of his authority and power over the mankind is over now because i am risen 
I am going to create a new creation, a new mankind altogether. And that is what is the new man in Christ as he was before his fall in the garden of Eden. Praise. And this is what Satan didn't like. In Genesis chapter 3, we read, God says, Through the seed of woman, your head shall be crushed, and you will stay in his head. And that is how was the gospel given right in the beginning of the creation and fall of mankind. Now it is being fulfilled here. Now the seed of woman. Remember that word. It's only single seed of woman. While Jesus was also was born while Maryam was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is Jesus we have. And this Jesus is telling you, now it is the beginning of new kingdom of God on this now. Satanic rule has been crushed down. And this fact, friends, we the church have not really realized making vain excuses for our disobedience and sinfulness whatsoever. How many Good Friday Easter's we have celebrated. And Christ is asking us today, you are the witnesses of this. You have heard messages of Good, of good Friday and Easter over the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of your life. You are the witnesses of these things. It is the new creation that God is creating after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, bringing all mankind to Him. And His church today is growing, whether you like it or not. His church is all over the corners of the world, as He said. You go and preach the gospel. God's people and missionary God is raising to, to see that it, it, His message reaches to the corners of the world. And what is the message? That God has come to love you. God has come to deliver you, make you free indeed, make you give that entire, entire liberation and salvation that is from God. How much of that salvation we have experienced is the question during this time of season that we are observing. This has begun the kingdom of God. John the Baptist preached, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Peter on Pentecost Sunday, he, he preached, repent and be baptized. But the kingdom of God has come. Jesus preached the same thing. And here we see, friends, Jesus has brought, brought that hope to the dying mankind. Jesus has brought that hope to a sinful man, saying that this sin shall not dominate you. The sin shall not be master of you. If the Son frees you, you shall be indeed free. Friends, today, how much the message of the gospel we have understood, how much we want to understand, that is the, that is the real question. Are we really serious about the word of God? Friends, if we are not able or not showing our interest to know more about Christ, that Christ that appeared on the way to the mosque will never appear on your way. Are you really hungry, thirsty? What is your conversation today? Is it godly? Is it against somebody else? Is it murmuring against God? Is it complaining against somebody? What is it? And that is not our life that is called for. Jesus is telling you why you are sad. Why you are sad. The very worldly things that we talk and think and worry about will continue to make us sad. But the moment we come to the Lord's feet and we worship Him, Particularly, we worship Him on Lord's day and give Him the due glory to Him because His reason is not your dead God. He is not our dead God just to celebrate one festival and forget about it. No. The implication of this Easter, implication of resurrection is for each one of us for on daily and every day basis. Do we get it? And Jesus is telling here, explaining further, he says, you foolish, hard to believe. Don't you know that the scripture that has been told about this Messiah, this Jesus has to be fulfilled? Don't you understand? 
Jesus opened their hearts and minds to understand the scripture. He explains from Moses to prophets and Psalms and tells them what and how and why Jesus has to be accordingly glorified both in his death and his resurrection. By the time while this conversation is going on, they reach the town, the mosque, and Jesus showed as though he wanted to go further. They requested, Lord, come. It is night now, don't go. It is quite dangerous uh, road. You come and stay with us tomorrow morning, you can leave. Beautiful. And here we see the beginning of new worship of Lord Jesus Christ. Beginning of first church as, as it is, if you say it will not be really wrong. Why? Because we see there, that is the first time Jesus is breaking the bread to give to this, his disciples. Jesus says, okay, now when they sat at the table along with his two disciples, and then Jesus breaks the bread, and it is said that Jesus had a very peculiar style of breaking the bread, like breaking it from the front side. Usually we, we put the bread down here and break it like this, but Jesus' style of breaking bread was something like this. He would make two pieces, pull it opposite side and give it to his disciples. And the moment we see here, Jesus breaks that bread and gives to his disciples. Immediately he opened their eyes. They recognized that was risen Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, what a moment that must have been. And the scripture says that immediately thereafter he diminished. He went away from their side and he disappeared from there. And that is Jesus, the risen Lord. And what we see here, verse 32, we read, after this happens, these disciples still talk among themselves. They say, when Jesus was talking, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us? Very important. Sunday after Sunday, you sit with the word of God. You sit in your homes or come to church to worship. And this scripture speaks to us. And this Jesus, the, the, the risen Lord, speak to us and what happens and should happen. And he says that here as we read, that while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture to us, our hearts burn within us, heart burn within us. And that's how, friends, today we see that. When we hear the word of God, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, when Jesus speaks to us, what we see is His voice, His influence, the power of the, the Holy Spirit is very much, is, uh, is, is affects us. It affects us, it affects our minds and thoughts, process our emotions and our desires. It's very contagious as such. As we say, when someone is sad, we also feel sad. When someone is rejoicing, we also feel in a way coming into good mood and be happy. And when, when, when someone is rejoicing, when someone is praying in the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, when the Word of God is being preached, Holy Spirit is so contagious, speak to our hearts, we cannot deny that. And that's the time whether you reject the voice of the Holy Spirit or you accept it. There's a time when God blesses and touches us when we accept this. Friends, today, after as we saw this point here, Jesus is talking about hope. Jesus is telling them as such that you simply cannot say that we hope that he will redeem Israel, but I have already redeemed. I am that is the Lord Jesus. And they had no verse. And immediately these two disciples went back to Jerusalem to talk to their other disciples and friends over there. Lastly, you want to see here what happens when these disciples read Jerusalem to his disciples, to the his disciples up there. All the disciples were together in that house and they start talking again the conversation about the risen law. These two disciples, they expressed their testimony and told what happened and how they happened to see Jesus. And there we see Jesus again giving his sweet and blessed risen 
appearance to all the disciples there. There he says, my, I give my peace to you, peace to you. And they were still afraid, still terrified, still doubtful. And Jesus is telling, touch my hands and feet and see, I'm the same Jesus. Today, friends, what we see here in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Satan has lost the worship of mankind. He always wanted people to worship him. Let us let this truth go in our hearts and mind. In fact, even to Jesus Christ, he, he didn't spare. He said, you worship me and I will give you the entire kingdom. All what do you look at? That adamant and that kind of personality we call Satan, the enemy of God. He was Jesus to worship, kneel down and worship. Friends, let us not take it lightly. This very Jesus, when he gathered, when he was amongst his disciples, he comes down there with the blessings of peace. A very beautiful passage that we read this morning, and we will not be able to get to all the parts there, but it says that Jesus is talking to his disciples even before his resurrection. He says that a little while longer, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who loves me, he who follows my commandments, he loves me. And he will be loved by my Father, and my Father and I will come and dwell with him. Friends, today, who is dwelling in your hearts and minds? Who is dwelling in your lives today? Who is dwelling in your homes today? And that is, and that should be none other. Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, He said, "I will come again to take you. I will come again to take you, receive you to myself." Friends, now the next greatest blessing that is going to the going to come to the Church of God worldwide is the rapture of Jesus Christ. Rapture of Jesus Christ. On that topic, we'll continue to speak the coming Sundays. Please do not miss it. We do not want to miss any of our loved ones in that greatest of event of rapture that Christ is going to come to this world for His church, for His saved ones. Let us make sure that we are saved. Let us make sure we are surrendered. Let us make sure that we will We need, we need the ruler of the whole universe and not the rulers of this world. He's already defeated. He's doomed to eternal hell and his time is getting closer. He's, he's, he's continuing to attack God's people everywhere in all churches. Friends, but then you and I need to be protected by this Jesus in his Lord. Let us surrender ourselves. This, this time God is calling us, calling us, come my child, I want to give you my peace. This worldly talk will give you only sadness, depression, and worries. I have come to this world to give life and life abundantly. Let us go down our heads in prayer. As we pray, ask our loving, caring God to come in our hearts. To come and abide with us as you sing this one chorus. All to Jesus I surrender. Let us open our hearts to the Lord Almighty and ask Him, Lord, you are the only victorious and most glorious King of Kings. We want to worship you on this Lord's day. We want to worship on this Lord's day. We want to pray. We want to have the communion of the saints. We want to have the fellowship. We want to have the conversation with each other to bring glory on your name. Let us join. All to Jesus I surrender all to Jesus is touching someone today. Open your eyes and hearts to Him. To him. Ask Him to come to life. He's waiting for you. Today's Lord's name. 
today's victorious day of our living God. He is coming, coming back in the rapture. He doesn't want anyone to be left out. Are you ready? Do not wait for tomorrow or the next Sunday. He will come any time. His kingdom is growing today to the days of this world. Oh, glory, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, bless the Lord Jesus. We praise you, thank you, Lord, for our church. Thank you for all each neighbor, so Lord. Thank you for each child of your kingdom of gracious God. Bring your mighty healing hand. It will touch to your dear people of gracious God at this point. As we celebrate this God's day, speak to us, Lord, as we spoke to those, your disciples on the road to the cross. Lord, open our eyes. We want to see you, Lord. Jesus, you promised that you will see me again. The word outside will not sing, but you shall see me once again. Lord, we surrender. We will surrender, Lord. Watch his glances, forgive us, Lord. Lord, we want to see you. Lord, you have closed down the beautiful temples and churches. Sanctuaries of all and closed us down in our own homes, Lord, so that we may experience the loving, living Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Oh, you are the victorious King, Lord. You have defeated all secondary forces, Lord. Bring your healing touch, Lord. Bring your healing blessings to the families, Lord. Unite them in the name of Jesus. Reconcile the families, Lord, with each other so that they will love one another. They will love you, Lord. Oh, with your child, your child is near your God. Oh, the rapture. Keep us ready. Make us ready, Lord. Now, we are ready. Here we are, Lord. Here we are, Lord. Take us. Touch us. Make us. Make us. Lord, us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing your prayer. We bless and praise your name. Thank you for your church leaders and our congregation. Bless your congregation wherever they are. Protect them, Lord, by all means, oh, Lord. But in during this time of crisis, Lord, save those people, those who are dying. Heal those people, those who are sick and on the way. Words of dying, the Lord. Bless our nations, bless our police, and bless our doctors and medical staff, Lord. Lord, bring your peace. Bring your kingdom into this world, Lord. Lord, let your gospel continue to reach to the corners of this world. For we ask all this in the most blessed and mighty name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In closing our service, friends, we are going to sing our last hymn. Hymn number 470 from our hymn. Give us this day your daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you, with all your dear one and loved ones, both now and throughout this year. Amen.